Hi, my name is Jennifer, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to divide using the long division method. Grab a pencil and some paper and work these problems with me. Before I show you how to long divide using polynomials, let's first review how to long divide with integers. This is something you probably learned way back in elementary school. So let's follow along and see what you remember. If you were given the problem 550, five, 561 divided by 2, this is how you would set it up for a long division. You would draw what I call a division house, and you would put the first number inside that house. Whatever you're dividing by, which is actually called the divisor, goes on the outside. Next, you're going to ask yourself the question, how many times does 2 go into 5? We're not going to look at the entire 561. We're going to take it bit by bit until we get to our answer. How many times does 2 go into 5? Or you can ask the question, what number times 2 gets us close to 5 without going over? That would be a 2. We're going to write that number 2 above the division house. Then the next step is to multiply five, 2 times 2, which is 4. And we're going to line up that number on the line underneath the 5, but directly underneath it, and we're going to subtract. We're going to subtract just in this column, 5 minus 4 is 1. Then to continue the problem, we are going to drop the next number in 561, which is a 6. And the cycle begins again. 2 how many times does 2 go into 16? Or you can ask yourself the question, what number times 2 would get us close to 16 without going above it? In this case, 2 times 8 is 16. We're going to multiply 8 times 2 to get 16. We're going to subtract 16 times 16 happens to be a 0, but we're not finished with our problem yet because we still have a number to drop down. We're going to drop down our 1. And the cycle continues. How many times does 2 go into 1? Well. It's not a trick question, it just doesn't go into 1 at all, okay? So we're going to consider this number 1 as a remainder. Now, different from what you did in um, elementary school is we're not going to put the cute R on top and the 1 next to it. We are actually going to convert this remainder into a fraction because that's how we're going to do it in algebra class. So let me show you how that works. We're going to take our remainder of 1 and we are going to put that in the top of a numerator. The bottom of our numerator is going to be this number on the outside, which is called our divisor. So the remainder is on top, the divisor is on the bottom. Okay, And so the answer to this division problem is 28 and 1 half. So, I think we're ready to try one with polynomials. Take a look at this example. We have x squared plus 9x plus 20 divided by x plus 4. Let's go ahead and set this one up in the division house. Go ahead and draw a much bigger division house. 
and we're going to put the polynomial in the numerator or on top inside the house. Next, we're going to put the divisor, or the number on the bottom, on the outside of the house. Now that we have our problem set up, we are ready to divide. Let's begin. We are going to actually just look at the first term, x, and we're going to ask ourselves, how many times does x go into x squared. We're going to ignore the rest of this trinomial and we're not going to look at the 4. We're just going to answer this question, x goes into x squared how many times? Or we could say what number times x would give you x squared? Well, x. If I had an x as part of my answer, x times x is x squared. So I'm going to line up my x squared directly underneath the original x squared. However, I need to multiply this x completely with this binomial, so I also need to include the positive 4. So now I need to multiply the same x times positive 4 to get positive 4x. Okay. Next, I want you to draw a line and a subtraction sign. Because we're going to subtract, we're going to do a two-column subtraction. And what that means is that this second binomial will be subtracted from this x squared plus 9 binomial. Okay, the first one, x squared minus x squared is zero, or you can say it cancels out, but we don't have to put anything here. The second column, we need to remember that we're still subtracting. Even though we have an addition sign here, we're subtracting. Okay, we're adding the opposite, you could also think. 9x take away 4x is 5x. Now our problem's not quite over yet because we have one more term to drop down. And that's our positive 20. After we drop down our last term, the process begins again. How many times does x from our divisor go into 5x? Or you can answer the question, x times what number times x would give us 5x? That would be a positive 5. We're going to put a positive 5 up in our answer line, and then we're going to do a multiplication problem to this binomial. Let's begin. 5 times x is 5x. We're going to line that underneath the other 5x. 5 times positive 4 is a positive 20. We're going to draw a line. We're going to draw a subtraction sign but we are subtracting this entire second binomial. So let's keep that in mind. The first column is 5x minus 5x, which is 0. It completely cancels out. The second column is 20 minus 20, which is also a 0. So in this problem, We have a zero remainder. Now where's our answer? Our answer is back up here on top. Our answer to this division problem is x plus 5.
So let's look at another example together. In this problem, we have the trinomial 3y squared plus 4y minus 4 divided by 3y plus 1. Now our first step is to put this problem inside of a division house. You'll want to draw your division house. And inside the division house, we're going to put the polynomial that's on the top of our fraction or in the numerator. On the outside of the division house, we're going to put what's on the bottom of the fraction, which is a 3y plus 1. Now we're ready to start. How many times does 3y go into 3y squared? Or what number, when you multiply it by 3y, gives you 3y squared? That would be a y. We're going to put y on top, and then we're going to multiply y by this binomial 3y plus 1. y times 3y is 3y squared. We're going to be careful to line this one directly underneath the other y squared term. Then we're going to multiply y times positive 1 which is a positive 1y. Next we're going to draw a line and we're going to draw a subtraction sign. Now remember that we are subtracting this entire second binomial. 3y squared minus 3y squared is 0 can actually cancel these out if you want. In this second column, we have 4y minus 1y, which is 3y. After we've done our subtraction, we need to look to see if we have another term to drop down, and we do. Once we've dropped down the negative 4, the entire process begins again. We're going to ask ourselves the same question. How many times does 3y go into 3y? Now, it seems a bit confusing, so you may want to ask yourself, is there a number that when you multiply it by 3y, the answer is 3y? What would be a positive 1? Positive 1 times 3y is 3y. Positive 1 times 1 is positive 1. Draw your line in your subtraction problem. Don't forget we're subtracting by that second binomial. 3y minus 3y is 0, or you can cross out that column. The second column is negative 4 minus 1, which is a negative 5. Now, notice that there's no other term to drop down. So we're at the end of the problem. So our negative 5 is going to remain as our remainder. But we're going to write this in a fraction format. We're going to take our negative 5 and put that in a numerator. And in the denominator, we're going to put our divisor 3y plus 1. So even though that makes our answer look a little strange, it's still correct. So the final answer to this division problem is y plus 1 minus 5 over 3y plus 1. Now, let's look at this final example together. We have x cubed minus 8 
divided by x minus 2. Now, you may notice that our top um, binomial it looks a little small. Okay? We have an x cubed and then we have a minus 8. Now, if this was in descending order, it's missing a few of the terms in between. So for this problem, I'm going to introduce to you how we're going to use placeholders um, to represent the missing terms. Well, let's go ahead and draw our division house. We're going to put the top um, polynomial inside the house. However, we're going to put, we're going to insert a few placeholders, and I'll show you what we're talking about. X cubed is going to go first. If this were in true descending order, we would have an X squared term. But because we don't, we are going to put what's called a placeholder which is going to be 0 x squared. I went ahead and put a plus 0, but it doesn't matter if you have a plus 0 or a minus 0. I just think plus signs are a little easier. Next, if this was in descending order, we would have an x term. Notice the problem does not have an x term, so we'll need an additional placeholder. So I put a plus 0 x. Now we're ready to put in our negative 8. And then we'll put our x minus 2 on the outside. Now that we have the problem all set up, we're ready to divide. Ask yourself the question, how many times does x go into x cubed? Or what number, when you multiply it times x, gives you x cubed? That would be x squared. So let's multiply x squared times x to give us x cubed. We're going to line that carefully underneath the other cubed. x squared times negative 2 is a negative 2x squared. We're going to line that right underneath our placeholder. We're going to draw a line, our subtraction sign. We're ready to subtract. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. The cross is out. 0x squared take away negative 2x squared is actually a positive 2x squared. Let me repeat that. 0 minus a negative 2x squared. We could also think of it adding the opposite. If we change this to an addition and the negative 2 to a positive 2 would produce a 2x squared. Now we're ready to drop down another term and continue the problem. We're going to drop down the placeholder 0x. And then we'll ask our question, how many times does x go into 2x squared? Or what number times x gives us 2x squared? We need a positive 2x. Now we'll multiply 2x times x to get 2x squared. 2x times negative 2 to get a minus 4x. Now we're ready to subtract. Two x squared minus two x squared is zero. We can cross that out. Zero x minus a negative four x is a positive four x. Again, if it helps you 
to um, add the opposite sign, 0x plus a positive 4x. That's how we got the positive 4x. Okay, we have one more term to drop down, which is our negative 8. What number times x gives us a positive 4x? That would be a positive 4. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. We're ready to subtract. 4x minus 4x is 0 crosses out. Negative 8 minus negative 8 is also a 0. And if you're having a hard time seeing that, you may want to try to add the opposite. Negative 8, instead of a minus negative 8, we could look at it as plus a positive. And let me reread it. Negative 8 plus 8 is also a 0. So for this problem, we do not have a remainder. And so our answer is found up top. x squared plus 2x plus 4. So if you still have questions about this topic, please contact your professor or stop by the math tutoring lab or watch this video again.